Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we design, build, and fly this square foam board RC model airplane. Let's get to it. It's flying! This is my design of a square foam board RC model airplane. This model is built from common foam board. It typically comes in 20 by 30 inch sheets, uh, 3 16th of an inch thick, and you can get it at a variety of sources, Michael's Art Supply, Dollar Stores, Amazon, and this is the foam board. This is the uh, material used for the entire airplane. I'd like to take you through the construction of this model first. I want to let you know that I have a complete set of TurboCAD plans for it. I'll put the TurboCAD plans up on the visual timeline so you can take a look at them. Also, the plans are available for download, both a, a PDF and a JPEG version, uh, in the product of uh, the, the video description, so just you can download them from there. What I did for this model is I just picked a 20-inch square for the size of the model. It could be bigger or smaller. This is going to be very easy to scale up. I thought that the 20-inch uh, wingspan and width would be about right for the motor that I have. Uh, the receiver is a Spectrum AR620, two HS40 servos with, uh, with the um, Castle Talon 15-speed controls, a three-channel model with elevons for elevator and aileron and the throttle. The construction is as shown on the plans here. I have a vertical fin. I think that's necessary to keep the plane flying directionally correct. Uh, I put little reinforcement strips down here, uh, raised the push rods for the um, two elevons with these uh, foam um, build up uh, right here. Standard control horns in the back. The deflection is about 30 degrees up and down. That seems to be about right for the way this um, model is, is designed to fly. I'd also like to reemphasize the way that I installed and adjusted the control rods. You notice there are two pieces of music wire. They overlap in the middle, and you put heat shrink tubing over the overlap, shrink it down with a heat gun, and a little bit of glue. That'll keep everything in place. Again, it's very easy to do. I use a lot of models. You just have uh, two pieces of music wire, just a uh, heat shrink tubing. You overlap them. You can very carefully adjust the elevons to make sure that they're neutral, shrink it with a heat gun, and that's a quick and easy way to uh, get your um, elevons perfectly, uh, perfectly set. On this airplane, and for any RC model you fly, perhaps one of the most important things is the correct center of gravity. Generally speaking, for a straight wing, a center of gravity 25% of the way back is about right. So five inches back, I decided to put the center of gravity, even marked it here with a little CG symbol. The model balances at the center of gravity as it has to do. It's, it's, it, it is crucial that you do that for your model. I thought that I would have enough weight up front with the battery and the motor that it could balance at the center of gravity. It turns out there was just enough weight on this build with the tails and the various components. I had to add uh, four small uh, fishing weights at the front to keep the center of gravity at this point. Um, what I would recommend, what I show in the plans is this entire motor pod, you can move it just a little bit forward. So you have the weight of the battery, the motor, a little bit further forward. You may not need this weight to balance it out. Also, if you build it with a bigger motor, use a larger battery, and you move the pod a little bit forward, that will help keep everything balanced out. So that's really all the construction. The housing here is just kind of decorative for the uh, prop. I uh, used um, 1 8 inch plywood for the firewall to have uh, something to, to, to um, screw onto the, uh, the engine on. That, that seems to work fine. The receiver in here is buried tucked away, the electronic speed control, and the battery just fits into the side here. Servo is located here, again, just a reinforcement, and there's double sided tape to hold it in. And that is the entire model. There's no airfoil, there's nothing, it's flat, and that's what we do. The final thing I want to show you before we take it out and try to fly it is just a very short discussion uh, demonstration of the elevons. 
So what we do is we have to set the elevons up on the radio. Let me demonstrate very quickly how to do this. This is Spectrum DX6. You'll have to uh, check your owner's manual to, to, for your particular model. But we go down to the um, system setup. This is the menu that comes up when we first uh, pick what type of model we're going to do. You see the model select, the type, the name. What we're going to do is go down to aircraft type. And we click the scroll wheel on that, and you can see this is a picture of an elevon two servos and the two separate controls that function as both elevators and ailerons with the dx6 when you go down and select that you can see there's a range of different options you can have two ailerons one flap one aileron one flap flap runs normal so what i do is i go to the um, elevon select that Go up to the main menu, and everything's fine. So let's show how they work. For up um, elevator or elevon, you see we pull the stick back, and both of the surfaces go up. We go down, they both go down. The key thing with the elevons when we turn, they act as ailerons. So this is a left turn with the right one down, left one up, and the opposite to the right. So when we go up, we can still turn as it's up or down. It functions very carefully, all because of the mixing in the radio that has this to go. I want to give you a very important tip that might help you. It, 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 I had to do some uh, a little bit of Google research on this. When I hitched all this up, I could not, through all the server reverse, and get it to function properly. And what I had to do is one servo is plugged into port number two, which is a normal aileron port. The other one is plugged into port number three, which is a normal elevator uh, port. What I did was I just swapped those around, the two servos to the other port. That cleared everything up and everything behaved uh, correctly. So keep that as a hip pocket option if you're having trouble getting it to work. For sure, make sure that everything works as um, before you start gluing things in and binding it in. You may have to put it in the other control arms your, your particular radio uh, to get it to work. But, but the elevons are the key to this whole, whole thing. The total weight of the model is 10 ounces with the battery. And for the components, it will be in the description. I have a Park BL250 electric motor. Uh, swings about a seven by three prop. I got that from Stevens Arrow. Uh, the AR620 receiver from Spectrum. Talon 15 electronic speed control. Uh, two high-tech HS40 servos. And then a two cell lithium polymer battery. We're out here at the field for the test flight of the foam square. It's a beautiful day to fly. There's, there's no wind. Uh, the clouds will be good for photography. We're here by ourselves. So we will give this a shot to see, see if this thing flies. All right, this is up, down, left, or, or left, then right. Yeah. It's flying!
Yep. So as you can see from the video, the square flies, uh, and it flies well. Um, I was very happy. It has enough power. The center gravity was right with our four uh, sinker weights at this location. Center gravity is 25% uh, back from the leading edge. Um, the control surfaces were, were plenty. It was a very smooth control. Engine had enough power. We'll put the details in the um, description of what, the, what all the components are. But I got to say, this this handled well. It was a very um, uh, stable flyer, for lack of a better term. Orientation was good with the tail, uh, with the vertical tail here. You could tell where it's coming and going away from you. But overall, it just flew well. I couldn't really be any more pleased. I deliberately kept it a little bit slow for the video so you could see what was going on. It can obviously fly a little bit faster, but um, Elvon's worked fine and very happy with this whole thing. It just it worked out great. We're back from the RC field, and you can see this model f flew perfectly. I mean, just right after the hand launch, it just was um, stable, honest, felt like it was in full control. It was just a pleasure to fly. I think this model was stable enough that it could actually be used as a trainer aircraft. I just am amazed that something like this, just an absolutely flat board, flies, uh, generates lift the whole nine yards. As I mentioned uh, before the flight, the center of gravity is crucial. Make sure you get that right. Um, there was plenty of thrust. I have probably about uh, three degrees right thrust, three degrees uh, down thrust with, with washers on the motor, and the model just flew well. It was plenty of power, good keeping the orientation. It slowed down when I appeared like it was going to stall, just a little bit of power. It zipped right along. It just I just couldn't be any happier with this model, and it really makes you do some thinking about wings and lift and wing shapes and all that to have something like this fly as well as it does. So I, um, there's a full set of plans in the description. Um, go ahead and give it a, a try. You can make it in a couple of hours and you'll be off flying. Um, there's really not much that you can do to uh, screw up this design. Uh, I did use um, colored packing tape uh, just for a little bit of decorative items. I used that for the um, hinge line, make sure you put the bevel on the hinge when you um, uh, glue that in place. And everything else is per the earlier description. It's just not that much. So very happy. I'm looking forward to flying this more at the field. It was a fun project, and I've got a great flying model airplane out of it. Best of luck with yours.